All right, guys, I just wanted to do a video here and show you this Glock I just got not too long ago. Uh, there's a couple things about this Glock that's kind of cool, and number one is it's kind of unique. Uh, it's not real unique or rare or hard to find, but it is a little unique for what it is, so we'll get into that. Let me go ahead and open it. I hate it when <laughs> people talk about a gun and they leave it sit there with the box closed for 20 minutes. Okay, here it is. This is the Glock 19 TB. And of course, the TB means threaded barrel. Uh, I already cleared one out of the chamber before I turned the camera on because I have been carrying this Glock. So here's the one from the chamber, and here's the magazine. We'll go over what I'm carrying in this next, and we'll you know we'll just kind of run down the line with everything. So let me go ahead and get this box out of the way, and we'll talk more about this TB. Now, I had not really heard anything about these or seen these. Uh, where I heard, first heard about this from was Crazy 45 Cat got one, Jerry. And I seen it on his channel. And uh, <laughs> he says he got something at the gun store. He did a video and he's like, hey, you know, a Glock that's factory built for a suppressor from the factory. I mean, um, it's got the, the factory threaded barrel. This, this is just a polymer thread protector so you obviously can get yourself a nice metal one and Ameriglow sights are the ones that make the night sights or I'm sorry these are not night sights I'm getting kind of confused here these are not night sights but Ameriglow is the one that makes these Glock does not make sights in the house so these are Ameriglow but they are what Glock uses on the TB now this is a European barrel it is a Glock mark marked barrel and it is a left-handed thread, and it's different from the Lone Wolf barrel. It's, uh, I believe it's a 1x35. So it's not the same as the Lone Wolf barrel, the thread pitch, okay? So that's something you have to consider. You can get uh, adapters for your cans and different things like that, you know, and make that all work. But it's kind of cool that this is set up from Glock factory with a, you know, with a Glock barrel that's threaded. So what's the other cool part about this gun? Well, the other cool part I'd have to say about this gun is that I got this for $394. <laughs> you might ask yourself, well, how did you do that? You know, was there somebody that was selling it that was, you know, needed money quick and uh, had to get money and, you know, called you? Nope. Actually, it was at one of my favorite gun stores of all time, Boom, fin, feather, and fur, okay? Now, fin, feather, and fur has not given me anything. Fin, feather, and fur has not uh, done anything differently with me than, it, than anybody else that walks in there. But this is the guy I deal with simply because this guy, is he's a really uh, good guy that works in the gun department, and he, he knew me from my videos, okay? So uh, this is the guy I deal with, Jeff Green. He's at the Fin, Feather, and Fur. Right there's the, right there's the address and everything. You can look there. So if you go to Fin, Feather, and Fur in North Canton, uh, see him. And like I said, this is not a paid endorsement. This is not any kickbacks or anything. I'm simply doing this because Fin, Feather, and Fur has treated me awesome, and and Jeff has, you know, Jeff has went out of his way to help me. Like, and what do I mean when I say that? Well. There were three of those FDE Glock 17s in there, and he let me pick through all three, brought them out of the back, brought the other ones out of the back. Little things like that. Let me strip, you know, break a gun down, look at it. Um, just different little things like that is what is, uh, is you know, what has happened to me there. And um, I really like it there. So $394, it was in the used gun case. I'll give you some close-ups. <laughs> I frog lube this so there might be a little bit of residue here and there, but I'm telling you what, guys, this thing is a clean, clean G19. It's, I mean, this, it's a Gen 3. Uh, now, I gotta tell you, I have Glock Gen 4s, and I like Gen 4s, but to me, the trigger on a Gen 3 always feels better. And I'm gonna show you why, because we're gonna go ahead and break this down, and I'm gonna take the barrel out and show it to you. But I'm gonna tell you why that the trigger right off the bat why I think it feels a little bit better most most times than a Gen 4 and that is because of the fact that there's no bump on this on the ledge 
of this piece of material right here. There's no hump like on the Gen 4s and that, that rides against the metal of, metal of the slide and kind of gives some resistance. And when you pull the trigger, this moves. I'm not going to get into a ton of detail, guys, but trust me, I know what I'm talking about on this. Uh, that bump causes some extra friction when you pull the trigger on Gen 4s. Now, I like Gen 4s. I own them. Uh, you can do a little bit of polishing work. Hey, you're, you're gold. You know, so don't, don't think I'm down in Gen 4s because I'm not. Okay, so here's the barrel. Let me get you some close-ups of this guy. There it is. You can see the, the stamping on it. 9 by 19 Glock. It's got the little, um, the little uh, funny-shaped stamp right there. Like the Pentagon. There's the threading. This threading is kind of weird because it sits like in the middle. It's tapered in here and tapered back there. So this is a factory Glock threaded barrel. Now, like I said, the sights aren't stamped anything. And you got to keep in mind that uh, the sights are Ameriglow. Uh, but, but I guess Ameriglow got the contract. Now, I don't know how many of these there are, but the, here's the information I found out besides the sights. The information I found out is that these were announced at SHOT Show 2014. I still had never heard of these, believe it or not. You know, as big a gun guy as I am and into Glocks and different things, uh, you know, like I said, Crazy 45 Cat was how I seen these, how I seen one. But um, I didn't hear about it, but they were announced at SHOT Show 2014. Okay, so what are the models that you can get set up threaded barrel from Glock Factory? The models are the Glock 19, of course, the Glock 23, and the Glock 21. Okay, so those are the three models that you can get from factory set up uh, from the factory for suppressor. And there it is. Now let's talk a little bit about carry, because like I said, I do carry this guy. Um, I, I use this crossbreed, and I'll tell you why. I normally go with the Aegis Armory, but <laughs> there was a snag. Uh, I didn't bring it out here to compare, but I'll tell you about this. The snag is, is the front sight is a little too high in the Aegis but it works in here because of this flare. So when you draw it out, the sight touches a little bit. The sight can touch the polymer right here a little bit, which I don't care. All it would do is rub some paint off of there and you could get a Birchwood Casey uh, cold blue pen and fix that if you wanted to. But here's the thing, it doesn't snag ever. See how flared this is up here? This never has snagged on me. I do draws out of this. It's never snagged. It comes out free. It's never hooked up. It's never locked up. Once you get into this channel, you're gold. And this channel is flared higher than the sight. So you're never going to get caught up in here. You're on Kydex, and the trigger, gu the trigger guard is out. So the gun has room to move, okay? So you're never going to get caught up in the channel. It would only be right here if this wasn't flared high enough on, on other holsters, like with the Aegis Armory. It's too tight. It doesn't want to go in. And if you do it sideways and put it in Aegis Armory, and then when it locks in down here and you go to draw, your front sight snags. So the crossbreed's working good. I'm about to lock tight these screws. I might make a video of that for you next. You know, and you can watch it if you want, and just, you know, to get an idea to do things for your gear. But uh, here it is, guys. This is the Glock 19. Now, okay, let's talk about, I, I promised I'd talk about what I carry. <laughs> okay, so what I went ahead and got for this one was the Hornady uh, Critical Duty 9mm Plus P Flex Lock. It's 135 grain round, and this round does really good. Now, there's a couple of things about this round uh, that are unique. One of them is, is that it... it it can penetrate certain barriers like glass, some plywood, some sheet metal, and still go to the other side and still expand. So like you could shoot this through wall board. Now I'm not gonna get into a lot of this, what I'm about to say right here, because this is very um, limited to who can do this. But depending on who you live with, or if you have kids, um, you, you know, if somebody broke into your home, there is times you could shoot through a certain wall on the interior of your house. Uh, but like I said, I'm not going to get into that. It, that's very, very limited. Uh, so don't do that unless, you know, don't, 
But if you ever had to shoot through something, some kind of a thin barrier or um, glass or, like I said, wallboard or wood or thin metal sheeting, this will go through and expand into into uh, the threat on the other side. So it's 135 gram flex lock. Now you guys know normally, pretty much my most favorite round is the gold dot 124 grain plus P. And I, I still stand by that round um, as always. So here it is with the flex lock tip. And let me tell you another thing that's cool about this gun that you really don't realize at first. Even though this is a G19 set up with a um, this is a G19 gun, okay? It's got the G19 frame, the G19 slide and everything, but here's the thing. Because of this threaded barrel that still has rifling all the way to the end, this is like having a Glock 17 size gun now, or size barrel, barrel length, okay? So this G19 now can get you the velocity of a round like a Glock 17 barrel because of the long barrel that's rifled to the end. Okay, this round is optimal for 4 inch and longer, and a standard G19 barrel is like 4.2. So I've got that much more over four point, you know, over the 4.2 inch, this is optimal in a four inch barrel. Now, you can shoot this in shorter barrels and it will expand, it will work for you, uh, but sometimes the expansion won't be as large as it could be when it's ran through an optimal sized gun. And what they call optimal is four inches minimum or more. But like I said, don't think that if your gun barrel is three, three and a half inches, that this won't work because it will. It just, the expansion diameter just won't be as large as it will because of more velocity. Let me explain that. More velocity presses harder and expands it out even further, whereas of a little bit less velocity for maybe a three inch gun, it may be like this. And then through a four inch gun, it may be like that. Okay, so we're, you know, I'm just kind of giving you a general idea of what I'm trying to talk about here for, for the new guys that may not know. Um, so yeah, guys. Awesome gun, awesome deals. Check out Jeff if you go into Fin, Feather, and Fur at this address. He's a good guy. Tell him you know H4T. And, uh, you know, and when you go up there to look at guns. And, uh, all right, guys. So I hope everybody has a great day. Coming up with a video next, I'll go ahead and show you about Loctite and these screws. All right, guys, this is H4T. And I am out of here.